Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com, wishing you and your family a very happy new year and a prosperous and safe 2012. I want to let you know a few things that are on tap for me for next year. One is I'm setting up a new welding area. I've got seven welding receptacles, so I'm going to be able to put a few TIG inverters up high and some MIG and other stuff down low on carts, and uh, it's going to make it a little bit, a little bit more fun to film video, and hopefully I'll be a little bit more efficient. So I'm going to try to work smart and work hard in the next year, and I hope you will take care of your families and work hard and work smart. Happy New Year. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I've got two parts to weld today, two crawler bodies. What kind of crawlers? sewer crawlers. These are crawler bodies that are going to be a remote control tractor crawler with a camera attached that go down and inspect sewers. But all I'm caring about today is making this weld with this one inch side plate. It's got a bunch of roller pins on it that uh, roller guides will go on for the tracks, but I've got to make a weld all the way around it. It's just got to be uh, watertight so the plating doesn't leach out. Even though it's one inch thick plates, uh, main, the main reason for that thickness is just for weight, but it has to be a good weld. And the main thing is, though, that it, it, it has a good appearance and doesn't let the nickel plating leach out when it's done. So I'm going to weld them all the way around, and I'm going to weld one with a short circuit uh, MIG and one with short, uh, I mean, one with spray transfer. So tip number one for MIG welding on something like this, use a good ground clamp with uh, hopefully copper dimpled jaws on it. That's the best ones I've found. And copper is a lot better than just flat copper flash steel because you need a good ground. The MIG welder does not care if you got a good ground or not. It's going to pump out wire regardless. It's going to make you think your settings are wrong when all it is is you're intermittently losing your ground. So a good ground is important. I didn't have a good ground at first on this and got some pits where it was trying to pick up uh, ground and I'm gonna have to clean those off because this is going to the platers but you know I forget things too sometimes I just clamp the ground clamp to the table and get in a hurry but I want to clamp it directly to bare metal so I get a really good crisp start and don't get that uh, drive-by shooting sound that you get sometimes when you're when you don't have a good ground now I like to use a little series of curf cursive ease or even a series of use I want to pick up my travel speed. Sometimes, also, I just use a straight forward and back motion, like a two steps forward, one step back type thing. But I like to use some kind of a technique to give me give myself an incremental, even set of ripples. Whether I'm pushing or pulling, I like to use some type of little uh, technique to, instead of a, just a straight pull, usually. Now, when we get into the spray arc, we'll do a little bit different. All right, tip number two, figure out a good way to prop. You know, you need both hands to make a really tight, good weld with MIG. You need to be able to prop, hold the gun really steady so you can make precise movements. And here's one way I like to do it. I like to prop the gooseneck on my thumb like that, kind of prop my pinky on the table, and I'm just rolling my pinky over, and then I can extend my hand, extend my thumb, and make a good, you know, 12 to 14 inch run of travel without any problem. In this case here, I've got a little radius weld, so I just happen to have a little uh, axle stub to prop on, so I'm going to do that. Now right here, I'm using about a 90 degree gun angle. This is neither push nor pull, and if you can't make up your mind to push or pull, 90 degree works fine. A little pushing, a little pulling, uh, you know, as long as you don't get crazy with the gun angle, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Here I'm going right to left. You need to be able to weld right to left and left to right because the situation is going to call for one or the other. And if you're locked into one, you're going to have problems. Tip number three, again, push, pull, left to right, right to left. It all works if you don't go nuts with the gun angle. Use a little push angle, a little, a little pull, or a little push, and it'll work. All right, here's my, me using a little series of uh, loops, cursive ease with short circuit MIG. I'm using 7525 gas, probably about 21 to 22 volts, 
somewhere close to 300 inches a minute wire feed speed and that's what I got. Now for this weld, since I just previously made one of them, it's kind of hot so I'm propping with my pinky, rolling my pinky over using a, a TIG finger even though I'm MIG welding, I'm using a TIG finger just to rest on that hot metal. And the same thing, I'm rolling, I'm propping on a pinky and I'm rolling my hand over. I want to keep the weld really tight and narrow because it's down in a tight groove like this. And that's a good way to do it. Just one of many ways to prop. Here I've sped it up here so you can watch my hand positioning as I just roll my hand over, making a good 12 or 14 inch run without losing my prop and without getting all shaky. All right, spray transfer is another method. It's really hot, but you can only do it if you've got a big enough welding machine with high enough duty cycle and the right welding gas. I'm using 9010 Argon CO2 here today. You got to have more volts. You can't get into spray unless you get up around, uh, you know, way above like 25 volts. I think I'm using about 27 to 28 volts here. Uh, probably about 350 inches a minute of wire with that 035. But you can hear the difference. It's a lot hotter arc and it's a lot smoother. It doesn't sound like bacon frying. It sounds like a hiss. And the rippled appearance is very different. In other words, you don't get many ripples usually with spray unless you do some kind of uh, incremental technique to try to put ripples in it. Those are the two welds. One on the bottom is short circuit with a distinct ripple pattern and the other is very smooth with spray. Now once again, a little review here. This is the short circuit MIG set on up toward the high end of the range. Get some distinct ripple patterns. This is spray. Very way big difference in the sound of the arc, right? This is short circuit MIG with distinct ripples. This is spray transfer, much hotter. Ripples are much finer or pretty much non-distinct. Short circuit MIG gets penetration about like this. Adequate, but not crazy. And uh, here's a typical spray arc with a deep, deep penetration in the root. Short circuit MIG, again, sounds like bacon frying. That's kind of the sound that you're looking for. It's good for general fabrication and repair. It's very versatile because it can be used in all positions and even on sheet metal if you set it low enough. It uses either straight CO2 gas or a mix of argon CO2. Oftentimes 7525 is a standard. And again, can be used in all positions, but penetrates less than spray MIG. If you got it hot enough, it usually penetrates enough. Now spray transfer MIG has a whole different sound. It's got a hiss or a hum very hot, uses higher voltage settings, penetrates deeper, but not as versatile. Can't use it on really thin sheet metal, can't go vertical up on anything much, and uh, you know, it's just not as versatile. It's a production method. If you're welding railroad cars, spray transfer MIG, way to go, but there are other times when it comes in handy also. Thanks for watching.